Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the ET Auto EV Conclave 2018. With a steadily growing economy and the emergence of a burgeoning middle class, disposable incomes are on the rise. And India's nearly $100 billion automotive market is showing no signs of slowing down. Which leads us to the question, are electric vehicles the answer to India's rapid urbanization? And if so, how do we make the transition to electric vehicles a reality? How do we make it our reality? The ET Auto EV Conclave is aimed at bringing together all the relevant stakeholders in this equation, from policymakers to industry movers and shakers such as yourselves, on a single platform to explore this very critical topic, the electrification of automobiles. And let it be said that the Conclave has blossomed into a collaborative effort that's supported by an ecosystem of partners. And I'd simply like to take a moment to acknowledge them. Our presenting partner, Mahindra Electric, powered by JBM Group, our state partner, the government of Telangana, associate partners, Infineon and Western Digital, our supporting partners, Continental Corporation, Rocket Batteries, Automotive Research Association of India, and Autog. Our webcast partners, Arcadin and Streamon, our telecast partner, ET Now, and this initiative by ET Auto is supported by ET Energy World. But I'd especially like to thank all of you in the audience, especially because I've just been notified that we are already trending on Twitter by the hashtag ET Auto EVC. And that matters to us because this forum is intended to be interactive. And the combined wealth of knowledge in this room assures me that we have a very exciting day of conversations ahead of us. So with that, to help set the tone, may I please invite on stage the editor of ET Auto, Nabil A. Khan, to address our audience. Thank you, Pooja. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, present in the hall and those who are watching us live through webcast. Wish you a very happy new year, first of all, and a very warm welcome to ET Auto EV Conclave. We are delighted to get an overwhelming response from all of you. And thanks to the team for putting together such a big show, and especially guiding force from the industry who has always been helping me, you know, putting such shows. The importance of sustainable mobility and electric vehicle has gone deep across stakeholders, and it is reflected from the massive action all over. Efficiently managing the mobility of people in a sustainable manner has always been a key challenge for Indian cities. Hence, a viable solution to these complex challenges lies in implementing smart mobility solutions. Optimizing e-mobility use for everyday life with greater thrust on the use of public transport, e-vehicles, metro solution, and shared rides at, as means for mass transit could prove game changers in addressing the issue of air pollution in urban areas. Government has taken several reforms towards creating an ecosystem for electric mobility in the country the ambitious aim of becoming 100% electric vehicle nation by 2030, the fame, faster adoption, and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles program, and the new Metro Policy 2017 are steps towards achieving this goal. Indian government has further pushed the Indian automotive companies to expedite the electric vehicle manufacturing in country and is walking towards a policy surrounding electric mobility and storage, overcoming key barriers to vehicle electrification in India's passenger vehicle mobility sector presents an enormous challenge for India and also a tremendous economic opportunity. India can leapfrog 
the Western mobility paradigm of private vehicle ownership and create a shared electric and connected mobility system, saving 836 million metric tons of oil equivalent to rupees 20 lakh crore and a one gigaton of carbon dioxide emission by 2030. Not only this, the market is becoming more conducive for electric vehicle as we are planning to leapfrog to BS6, which will make IC engine costlier, while the cost of battery, lithium-ion battery, is coming down. Uh, the cost of lithium-ion battery was around $1,000 in 2010, which has come around $200 now per kWh. Estimates indicate that India's urban population will nearly double in the next decades to approximately 600 million in 2030, and forecasts suggest that then India's urban population will take almost 500 million trips per day. While this rapid growth presents a major challenge and uh, presents a major policy and business challenge for India and India's public and private sector respectively, it is also going to present enormous economic opportunity and business opportunity for the stakeholders. One by one, the main barriers to EV adoption, price, range, charging, and consumer awareness are falling due to steeply falling technology costs, business model innovation, and increasing connectivity. India can accelerate the EV adoption by addressing these key challenges through a whole system approach. However, the other major trouble that could ensue in high level of congestion on the Roads, as currently we have around 20 cars per thousand people, which is going to grow, thus there could be a congestion problem. So are we going to have a privately owned vehicles or we are going to rely more on public transport? That is a big question to be answered. There are several other questions and queries that keep humming around us. How can we counter issues like pollution when our 75% of the energy production is through non-renewable or fossil way. And it is expected that even by 2030, only 40% of the total energy production will be by non-fossil or renewable way. We are hardly have any technology which can help us store you know, uh, the solar energy. So that is a big problem if we talk about solar energy. Cobalt and lithium, that two, uh, the two most important elements for the success of EV is also not easy access to us. What are we going to do about them? Is it not that we are going to shift dependence on oil to lithium? What about the safety? We have seen several fire incidents in mobile battery, which is also a lithium ion battery. The electric car will have high amount of electric, electronic and software. How are we going to ensure anti-hacking? The electric vehicle is also going to pose challenges in terms of jobs because the automotive parts will be only 1% in electric vehicle compared to ICE. So that means uh, we are going to have lesser work at the workshops and uh, what will we do? And at the production also will have a lot of job cuts and new skill will also require. New skill will be required. So we have a president from ASDC who will talk about that also. So how are we going to deal with that? Is electric the only answer, or can we have other fuel options like biogas or fuel cells? There are several questions that need to be answered uh, as we begin this voyage, and we have experts for that. Today, this ET Auto EV conclave aims to lay down a roadmap for future driven by innovation and the vision to provide cleaner, safer, and faster transportation infrastructure. The conclave will focus on electric vehicle creating economically viable charging infrastructure, battery technology that can be improved, adopted, and discuss necessary intervention by government to improve effectiveness, efficiency, and safety of electric vehicles in India. I would like to again thank all of you for coming here and being such a nice audience. Thank you so much.